I think that's, that's mostly better. But uh, today we're talking about the interview shot or A-roll or your talking head. They all mean the same thing, but they all drive your story forward, whether you're shooting a documentary or a corporate video. Two of those things are the things I find myself shooting for the most part. And well, we're gonna talk about how you're gonna find yourself in a lot of situations where you're gonna either have mixed lighting or you're getting overpowered by the sun and big windows in corporate boardrooms. And how I found that my 300D Mark II just was not cutting it anymore. I needed more output. And well, Black Friday rolled around and I made a shopping list. And this episode is how Josh went broke again. Let's talk about it. Well, I'm not gonna leave you hanging as to which lights I ended up getting. I got a few things, so let's start from the smallest and work our way up. The first one is the Aperture 60X. This is a focusable bicolor light and it has been already super useful in my production kit. I actually learned about these lights from my good pal Dave. We were working on a documentary film project last year and they were super handy to have on set. So I decided to grab one for myself when the deal came around in the Black Friday deals. So it came with an additional soft box that doesn't normally come in the kit, which is already pretty stacked to begin with. So these lights, like I said, they're focusable, they're bicolor. Uh, you can run them off of NPF batteries or off of a V-mount battery. So you can just hang it up like I am right here behind me off of a Cardellini clamp and uh, a couple batteries and it'll run for hours. I have this running at like, I don't know, 5% right now with two NPF batteries. It's been going for a few hours already because I'm not great at making these videos. But let's talk about the next piece of equipment that I got through the Aperture Black Friday sale and that is the Light Dome 3. I currently have the Light Dome 2 and it's great. It's pretty quick to set up. The travel case isn't bad for it, but there are a few little quirks that drove me crazy about this light. And that's that after a few years of use and abuse, uh, the rods start popping out really easily. And even though the case that it comes with is fairly compact, it's still more cylindrical. So you have to be really careful and kind of baby it when you're throwing it in the back of your vehicle, making sure that it's sitting up top uh, so that it doesn't get crushed by other grip equipment. Uh, and that's something that drove me crazy. So the new one is great because now it's just a quick snap up to activate the light dome and uh, it actually folds a lot more flat. So the carrying case is more, even more compact than it was before. It comes with the same diffusion inside and egg crate. So nothing has changed there, but just the speed of setting up your lights has gotten better. And uh, now I have two, so if I need to have two soft sources on set, I have that option uh, to run that as well. That's the Light Dome 3. Not too much to say about that one. Now I've tried to incorporate a bunch of the equipment that I picked up during the Black Friday haul uh, in this shot right here. So next up was not a light once again, but a fixture that I was very excited to get. Uh, after watching a lot of Chris Brockhurst and actually Eric Floberg's videos where they utilized a spotlight mount. and I always thought of it as kind of a cheesy theatrical fixture for a long time because of how they're used in stage production. You get the, the cookies or gobos, you stack them in behind and they usually have really tacky uh, cutouts. But if you get the right cutout and you put it out of focus just enough, it can look or give a really real effect. So that is this blue light in behind me and it's just got a scattered pattern. And once you throw that out of focus, it could look like you're shooting through a window and I've got some nighttime daylight behind me with the, uh, the colored light over there. Now, admittedly, this is not my spotlight mount. Uh, Jesse actually just got a bunch of Aperture products. So he has the Spotlight SE. I have the 26 degree spotlight mount. So a little more focused than this one here, but gives very much the same effect. And you can use it in so many ways. As I said, Eric Floberg was one of the inspirations of getting this one because he just uses a hard light on his face as his key. He actually, I think, uses a handheld mic like this. I'm using this because I'm in a big open space and it seems to cut out a lot of the echo. But it's such a fun mount to use. Uh, with that one, he just gets that hard circle kind of light. It's like someone is literally shining a spotlight on him and that's super fun. Uh, and then you can use it in more of a traditional sense like I am right now, where it's just creating a little more texture in the background. So there's so many options with this and uh, I can't wait to use it more. 
So that's the spotlight mount. The great thing with that is it works with every light except for the 60D and 60X, I believe. I have the Aperture 120D Mark II, the 300D Mark II, and we'll talk about the next lights coming up. Well, we are on to our final purchases of this Black Friday haul and well, I'm building this kind of interview set just to show the type of situations that I find myself in uh, many of the times that I am out there filming in the wild. Uh, usually big old back window behind me and uh, I'm fighting that constantly. So how do I deal with this? Well, I went out and I actually purchased an Aperture 600D, not the pro version because for the most part, I'm generally going to be shooting on my own or in a very small crew. So features like DMX control, I didn't quite need. It would be nice to have the weatherproofing that the 600D Pro has, but I really just needed output knowing that I'm 99% of the time going to find myself indoors. If I ever need that outdoor feature, then I do have two more 600D Pros for the most part from Kristoff, who has offered to just swap them out if we both have a shoot on the same day and he doesn't have to compete with rain either. So I'm very lucky in that situation, but the 600D has got the output that I need. Uh, this is my current setup. I actually have it running through the Light Dome 3. And then I actually have an eight by eight full grid and uh, that is keying me right over there. And then I didn't bother with a fill. Probably could have used a little bit of a fill, but uh, it's not too bad right there. And that was, the, that was the main light that I meant to go out shopping for because what this light came with was an F10 Fresnel and the F10 barn doors, which about $500 worth of equipment coming with it for free. So that was pretty great. Uh, you're gonna notice there's another light behind me. That one I had no intention of buying, but after talking more with Kristoff uh, about potentially getting a 600X, we realized that there's not as much need for a bicolor light of that size in most situations because you can balance your white balance in the camera. Uh, and then having the RGB feature is a lot more useful, especially since we have a studio space like this where I have the potential to rent out an RGB 600 light. Uh, so that one also came with free barn door and free F10 Fresnel. And the one thing that I should mention that I learned the really hard way and that is that if you're in Canada or anywhere outside the States, but you're ordering from a US site, do not order it from aperture.com. Find a dealer partner because they've already paid all the duty fees and all of those tariffs that I ended up having to pay on my own. And the worst part is, is that all of these lights I ordered, even though I ordered them at the same time, they all came in separately, which meant that I had to continuously pay border fees. And I actually have the softbox and the final F10 barn door waiting for me at UPS where I have to pay another fee. So do yourself a favor, find yourself a partner dealer for Aperture products when there's a big sale like this going on and it'll save you a lot of money and hassle in the long run. Plus you get your product pretty well all at the same time. So that was my Black Friday haul. I'm super excited about it. Uh, but this video is not quite done yet because I wanna talk about what my 2024 is gonna be looking like. Uh, there's a lot more projects that I kind of want to kick back into gear again. So uh, let's move to our final setup and, and kind of go from there. But this light is super fun. So the last thing that I really wanted to talk about in this video is the Locals project. This was a project that I started way back in 2019 and well, I've kind of gone away from it because life got busy and I just didn't have as much time to create that content, but I've been craving real documentary content. I love my job and what I do in the sports world, filming all of that great football and hockey content, but getting to tell full stories where it's completely my own, I have my own creative control over it. That's what we all really want. And, uh, and sometimes we gotta do it on our own. So that's what I really wanna get back to. I also just don't get as much time in the outdoors as I would love to get. That's my big community outside of the filmmaking community that I have here with Jesse, Kristoff, Brandon, Bonner, and Dave, and everyone else who comes through Evil Empire. And I just miss getting to go out there on the trails, kind of exploring with my other friends that are out there. And I have so many interesting friends that 
do really cool things in the outdoor community and I, I want to highlight those people and those things that that I'm really passionate about outside of filmmaking because I think that's the other thing that's really important that we hang on to those things that we're passionate about outside of filmmaking because if you're like me you watch tons of filmmaking YouTube content and you get stuck in this kind of bubble where you lose creativity and I've been noticing that a lot in my filmmaking because I mean let's face it I share a studio with a whole bunch of super creative people and you can't help but compare yourself to the stuff that they're doing and I'm I'm never going to shoot content like Jesse or like Kristoff and so that documentary outdoor content is 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 my love and I want to get back to that really bad so that's kind of what I'm hoping to do in 2024 and uh, and well I hope your 2024 is I guess going well so far I'm hoping to release this in the first week of 2024 so we'll we'll see you in the next video like and subscribe haven't done that in a bit